Um, so there have been 40,000 uh, mitoclib implants, so therefore obviously it's an important uh, device to talk about uh, in the context of transcatheter mitral valve repair or replacement. Um, there have been about 500 to 1,000 carillon implants, this is worldwide, and there have been a, a similar number of, um, of uh, neocords, surgical neocords placed uh, by a transapical approach. Uh, the transcatheter mitral valve replacements are uh, at the very beginning of, of, of their journey, as, uh, as Darren showed on, uh, on, on the paper published by, uh, by uh, David. And um, so it'll be very interesting to see what happens. But I think it's very important to not forget that uh, there's a lot of experience with MitraClip that's only just beginning to emerge with the other strategies. Having said that, despite 40,000 implants uh, worldwide, um, there is no survival or mortality data or benefit yet demonstrated for the MitraClip, and that's something that perhaps should have been done by now, given the number of implants. Uh, it's really only been shown to improve symptoms, functional capacity, quality of life, and it improves LV remodeling. These are important parameters. They may lead to survival benefits in functional patients, but uh, uh, we'll find out probably later this year when uh, when uh, one of the randomized trials um, report. Okay, so the next case is a, uh, is a uh, MitraClip case. Uh, it was uh, performed at the Royal North Shore and North Shore Private, um, the Royal North Shore and North Shore Private uh, Cardiac Unit. Um, it was performed by Ravi and myself, and uh, it's that of an 82-year-old retired accountant. He had had multiple heart failure admissions over the last six to 12 months, in particular in the last three months. It was very difficult to get him out of hospital for any length of time before he'd represent again with more heart failure. Uh, he was found to have a severe dilated cardiomyopathy um, with an ejection fraction, maybe even outside the, uh, the, uh, the boundaries of what's possible to fix with a mitral clip of 15 to 20 percent <coughs> symptoms between class three and four. Severe functional mitral regurgitation, as you'll see on optimal medical treatment. That's obviously very important to do that first. Uh, he had undergone uh, cardiac resynchronization therapy and failed to respond, so he wasn't at, and he, so he didn't get worse after that, but he simply failed to respond, and sinus rhythm was maintained. So all the last three points are very important. You do that before you start contemplating a transcatheter mitral valve intervention of any kind. If you haven't done those first, then you probably you know, shouldn't go to one of those expensive treatments that uh, are as yet uh, unproven. So, um, coronary arteries were normal, so this is a non-ischemic cardiomyopathy. You can see on the right side of the picture there that the arteries are really splayed, so the heart was well and truly uh, huge. The left ventricular end diastolic uh, diameter, which you can appreciate here on the uh, transthoracic images, was 80 millimeters. Um, you can see that there's failure of coaption uh, of the uh, uh, anterior and posterior leaflets uh, on the left side. and. Um, uh, on the right side, you can appreciate that on color flow, at least, there's severe mitral regurgitation. Um, this shows you the, the um, parasternal short axis transthoracic uh, images, and here it's important to be aware that this is not a pure functional case. There's an element of mitral annular calcification, which uh, we did appreciate before undertaking the mitral clip case, and that, that might impair your ability to grasp the leaflets in that, uh, at that location if the MAC extends onto the base of the leaflet, it could be more restricted, it might be harder to grasp, the posterior leaflet would be shorter, and uh, so that was an important consideration. And over here you can see that the jet virtually goes from the posterior medial to the anterolateral commissure, very wide jet, very severe regurgitation. And just another apical four-chamber view here, you can see that the jet goes across both pulmonary veins, so it fulfills the color flow criteria, at least for severe MR. If you looked at this person's regurgitant volume or EO, again, we found that uh, this person had uh, true severe uh, mitral regurgitation. And so you could see that yep. calcific nodule there, Peter. That, With uh, the posterior that, mitral annual yeah. yeah. So because this was a fairly extreme case with true end-stage heart failure, uh, everyone was wondering, was, was it right to do anything? Should we just continue with medical treatment and essentially let him die, or should we try and offer him something else? It was discussed with the patient, his family, and then it went to the multidisciplinary heart team, like all of our structural cases do, because it's an expensive treatment. And uh, it was decided that a mitral clip was appropriate, and we thought it was procedurally positive to do, uh, possible to do. Uh, you heard uh, Greg earlier say that, uh, that uh, the degenerative mitral regurgitation are the ones that really benefit from mitral clip, uh, that functional mitral regurgitation is relatively straightforward to treat, and that's true, I think, but it depends a little bit on how, how far apart the leaflets are, and as you'll see, or as we'll describe through the case, it was quite a difficult case, this one, uh, to bring the leaflets together and to clip. 
Just before we go on, the transeptal puncture for mitral clip, very important to get the puncture right. You want to be posterior, so you're over the co-optation point of the mitral leaflets. Remember, the anterior leaflet is quite deep. The posterior leaflet is more shallow, but goes right around two-thirds of the circumference of the valve. And you want to be superior, or at the right height, I beg your pardon, at the right height, so that you um, uh, have the right distance between the transeptal puncture and the co-optation point of the mitral leaflet. If you do that, you'll be able to clip the leaflets. If you don't have the right height, if you're too high, you won't be able to reach the mitral valve. If you're too low, you won't be able to bring the clip back far enough to adequately clip the leaflets. So there's some technical aspects there. On the left image here, you'll see that we measure the height, and it was 4.7 centimeters in this case, a little bit on the high side. Uh, we'd like to be between 3.5 and 4.5 and centimeters between the transeptal puncture and the co-optation point. And in this case, the co-optation point would have been displaced into the ventricle because of severe tethering of the leaflets due to the uh, displacement of the uh, papillary muscles. There are some important structures that you want to avoid as you maneuver the mitral clip down from the transeptal puncture and the steerable guide onto the, to the leaflets. And here you can see the uh, mitral clip right here and the clip delivery system here. Uh, we are negotiating the uh, cumin and rich, and below that the lift atrial appendage before we uh, arrive at the mitral valve uh, leaflets. Just a couple of important views and then we'll go on to the case. The three important views during the case that we look at, the left ventricular outflow tract view, the bicommissal view and a 3D toe basically, uh, looking at the mitral valve from a surgical uh, perspective, uh, a 3D on fast view. So here first the LVOT view, uh, where we're basically looking at the posterior leaflet on the left and the anterior leaflet on the right. Depending on how you rotate the toe probe, you can look at A2P2, the center of the valve. If you rotate the toe probe one direction, you'll look at the medial aspect of the valve and vice versa if you rotate the other way. Over here in the bicommissal view, uh, we use this view to maneuver the mitral clip to the medial aspect of the valve or the lateral aspect of the valve. And here you'll see medial is on the left, lateral is on the right. When we go to the 3D view, it's the other way around. This is the surgeon's view. Anterior is now at the front, so this view has been rotated, whereas normally with toe pictures you'll have the posterior at the, at the back. Here is anterior at the back or at the front of the closest to it. So, and lateral will be on the left, medial on the right, and you can see the mitral annular calcification here again that made us a little bit concerned that we might not be able to grasp. So let's uh, stop here and uh, go to the, uh, to the uh, case. And uh, we can stop the case, and uh, I might do that uh, during the case if you have comments, questions, or I might just... Uh, it's a three-hour case that's been condensed into 20 minutes. And so I might need to explain to you uh, a little bit about you know, where we're at and what we're doing. But if there are any questions and it's not clear, feel free to ask and we can pause it. Uh, will someone help me just get that up and running? Dr. Walters has asked an important question or made a comment that the, the, the calcification is important and the, the volumes are quite large and therefore grasping and achieving an optimal result will be challenging. And I think these are the elements that we've spoken about and I think this case, which uh, Peter will, will run through, will, will, will address all those questions systematically, Darren, I think. Um. Okay, we're, we're down to 20 minutes, and that's the length of the case. So let's, uh, let's run the case, and we might leave questions till the end. Good morning, uh, and welcome to the North Shore uh, Cath Labs. Um, my name is Peter Hansen. I'm an inter interventional cardiologist. On my right is uh, Ravi Bindi, also an interventional cardiologist. We've got Chris Chung doing our, uh, or responsible for our echo images today. As you've just heard, uh, we are performing a mitral clip procedure today uh, on a patient with very severe functional mitral regurgitation and end stage dilated cardiomyopathy. It is going to be a challenging case. Uh, as the posterior leaflet is very severely tethered uh, and we may have some problems grasping the leaflet but we will give it a try. It's, the patient has been reviewed by the heart team and the decision was made that uh, after all that's been done in the past, mitral clip is his best option now. So far we have uh, gained access via the right femoral vein. Uh, we have uh, then performed a transeptal puncture. Uh, the puncture was performed posteriorly and slightly lower than usual because of the severe tethering of the, uh, of the leaflets with the co-optation point being displaced into the uh, left ventricle. 
After the transeptal puncture, we place the steerable guide across the, um, the, uh, the septum uh, into the left atrium, and we have now placed the uh, clip delivery uh, catheter and the mitral clip above the mitral leaflets in the left atrium, and we're ready to uh, proceed with the rest of the case. Uh, Chris, just before we go on, could you just show the bicromissal view so you can just see where our clip is, medial lateral, um, just to make sure it's in the right location. And then we will go through the steps we need to go through before we cross the valve. So that you can see medial is on the left, lateral is on the right uh, uh, of the screen, and the, the clip clearly is uh, located over the medial aspect of the uh, mitral valve. Um, okay, so let's go back to the LVOT view. The next steps will be to open the clip arms, as, as Ravi mentioned, and uh, we will then uh, place the clip over the main part of the medial jet, and we will uh, check clip orientation relative to the line of coaptation, and then we will test the trajectory, and following that we will cross the valve. Can we switch to fluoro now? Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to open the clip now. Screen for me, please, Peter. So we're opening up the clip to 180. But let's go, uh, Chris. Find us a good 3D now, and uh, then we will check the uh, orientation of the clip arms relative to the line of corruption. So Chris will use a 3D on fast view uh, here from the left atrium down towards the valve, surgical view, um, and we're, um, so just to orientate everybody, uh, on the left side of the screen is the uh, lateral aspect of the valve now, on the right side of the screen is the medial aspect, the clip is, is uh, located or placed approximately in the center, maybe approximately in the center over A2P2, you can see that it's not uh, aligned uh, perpendicular to the line of co-optation, so we need to do a slight clockwise rotation of the clip, which is what Ravi is doing now. Uh, and you can now see it moving around so that we are um, perpendicular to the uh, line of co-optation. The next thing we have to decide is whether we want to try and grasp the leaflets in the ATP2 position. What do you think, Ravi? Should we try and grasp here, or should we go step more medially? Look, I think that I think that it would be helpful to go back to our conventional um, electric light by track view to see if there is anything we can actually grasp in a uh, in, in the view sense. I mean, as we talked about, ideally we wanted to start medially. Uh, if we can see tissue and if we can see colour here. This may not be a bad position to, to grasp if we can... Yeah, uh, I agree. We can try that first if there's a big residual jet on both sides of the, yep. uh, of, the, of the clip. Clearly then we have to go for more than one clip and then we step medially. Okay, I think we're ready to cross, cross the valve and uh, we will cross it with the clip arms open in this particular case. Uh, Different strategies have been described. We'll, we'll, we'll use an open clip strategy to cross the uh, valve into the ventricle. So let's go ahead and do that, Ravi. It's a okay. pretty good position. Okay. So we initially well, tried to grasp the, the, uh, the, the A2, P2 in the, the right center of the valve, the and it proved impossible because the leaflets were not close yeah. enough yeah. to do that. Yep. And now Explain we've stepped more medially, and we're doing a medial grasp first. And then we're more, intending to put clips more. in lateral to the first clip. So this is our first grasp medial. Let's get the anterior. Just, just, just come up, pull it back. You're too low for, for, yeah. for lowering the grippers. You need, you need to, you can, you need to yeah. come up yeah, so yeah. you can see you're pulling on. That's the better, Chris. That's really it's quite great, good. Great view. A little bit more back. Uh, okay, try there. I think you're good. Try the grippers there. Okay, so grippers down and close the closing clip. the clip here. It's important to understand that this was uh, about an hour yeah, into the procedure. Um, it this took looks quite a while to get um, this first grasp. The clip. So maybe the second thing, just double check that we've got good leaflet insertion. Exactly. Exactly. Um, the, the MI is irrelevant. It's all lateral. Yep. We're going to we're going to deal with that now. Okay. This clip hasn't really reduced any mitral regurgitation, and I guess the purpose of this is to facilitate the next. Uh, yep. Clip. Right. So I think if we've got. Good leaflet insertion, the jet is on the lateral side, 
I, I very much doubt there'll be significant, uh, a significant rise in the mean gradient, but we'll check that. If all of those are good, then we probably release this clip and then we go for a second clip very close and lateral to this one. So every time you put a clip in, you've and got to check the mitral valve gradient to make sure you're not creating mitral stenosis. The next clip will be echo and fluoro guided lateral to the present one. So I think the only thing really that's important here is to make sure that we've got good leaflet insertion. If you're happy with that, yeah. then quickly do the gradient. Forget about the, the collar. We've seen that. That's all yeah. good. Uh, the collar is, is, is not so relevant. This clip is just stabilizing the leaflet so we can place a central clip where the main jet is now. It really just facilitates the next uh, clip delivery. And obviously, Peter, uh, interpreting the gradient in the setting of severe MR often can be a little bit um, tricky, but it doesn't look severe at all in so, terms of the trace, the, in terms of stenosis. So. Yeah, I agree. It, you need yeah, to have a very so the um, two is, forthright is, is or very patient echocardiologist when you do this. Small reduction in the area, but a large component is from severe residual MRs, as yeah. Ravi just talked about. And so we're very happy with that. Um, gradient of two, that's not going to be an issue. Releasing the clip might also allow the, the gradient to come down even further. Okay. So, so just before we release it, Chris, you're happy with leaflet insertion? That is the only yeah, important thing. You're that. happy with that? Okay, let's go. So okay. now we're ready to release the clip. So test the lock first. So we'll try and, so this is a fairly standard. Fluoro, please. So we're trying to open the clip here. Oh. With, with the clip is locked and I'm Unlocking the clip and uh, yeah. okay, and then back to close side of neutral. We'll go back to the close side of neutral. You can see there's very little movement in that. This is important yeah. to ensure that when we leave deploy it, the it clip, it doesn't our, unlock. Um, sometimes and, uh, you get a faulty clip, and so this is just a formality lines. of testing the um, safety of the clip before releasing it. All of these is reliant. There are two lines that are linked to the clip, which we're now releasing here. Fluid These are safety line. lines in case the clip embolizes. Close at the moment. So we'll get... This is the top line. So when we were talking about aligning the clip, according to the line of cooptation before. Uh, it, so what that's Robbie's very doing important is because you want to clip corresponding parts of the mitral leaf of the posterior and, make sure and that the anterior leaf is, otherwise is you will clip and then we will, uh, remove the different parts of the posterior and anterior uh, leaf. So. Can you screen for me as I do this, please? Yeah, that's good. slowly, you know, coaxial direction to the and, then and once Ravi has done that, he will retest the lock, uh, so closed and then open, try to open the clip or fluor at the same time. And the lock is holding, which is great. Back to neutral. And then we're ready to release the clip. Now pull the pin. So pin is and then expose the unlocking mechanism yeah, yeah, towards you. Me until it comes out. That should be sufficient. Yeah. And then uh, eight turns towards you and we'll go fluoro. Yeah. Fluoro, please. One, two, three. And we will loosen four. the uh, clip delivery handle Five. so that we're ready to pull back on Six. the... Seven. Just and keep release, going, yeah. keep going. Yeah, okay. and now you can see that the clip has been released. It looks in a very good position, very stable position. And uh, we now need to remove the uh, remaining, uh, yeah, the gripper line. And I will screen as Ravi does that to ensure that the spear does not uh, approach the clip too much. And following that, we need to secure the guide, remove the clip delivery handle, and get ready for the second clip. Let me go to hemo, please, Nats, and just remeasure the left atrial pressure. So we're not expecting any improvement here, um, and in fact, it's more or less the same. Left atrial mean pressure about 23, 24, which is where we started with a V-wave of 52. We started with a V-wave of 50. Exactly what we expected. Yeah, so Peter, what's the next um, plan here? Now we've okay. put in a clip that's not really 
done much with the matter of vegetation, um, the hemodynamics and the echo. So what the first clip hopefully has allowed us to do is to grasp the, the leaflets in a more central location now, which we were unable to do before. We tried three or four times, it didn't work. And by then, we hopefully we'll see some reduction in the degree of MR. So the next thing uh, is to place a second clip. We will go as close to the first clip as possible. It will be a thorough and echo guided procedure, the second clip, but there will be more thorough guidance than echo guidance uh, on the second time around. Uh, we'll, we will go, we will place the clip, once we enter from the left atrium into the left ventricle, we will only go as far as the mid portion or the lower portion of the first clip to avoid clip entanglement and interference with the first clip. We will do this with the ventilator off and we'll remember, given that we're very close, that when ventilator goes off, the clip will move even more medially and closer to the first clip. So those are some of the aspects that we'll need to think about uh, for the second clip. Okay. I guess the other question, Peter, I mean, when we do mitral clips up, and the question is that we, we leave the patient with a degree of mitral regurgitation, which when the patient awakes and is active, the degree of MR often rises. So the question is, how aggressively do we drop the mitral regurgitation in someone who's got a highly depressed ejection fraction, uh, severe functional mitral regurgitation, where the mitral regurgitation is, in a sense, helping him... Sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the low impedance of the, of the mitral valve, the leaking, is uh, maybe important. Countering that argument, it's important to not leave the patient with too much residual MR. You have to remember they're under general anesthesia. The conditions are different than they will be tomorrow when he's up walking around. Yeah. Uh, and, um, and I think if we leave the patient with significant residual MR, more than moderate plus, say, I think the durability of the repair is less likely. Uh, yeah, no, These are very good points. So, so an indirect annular plasty device like a Carillon, probably not possible here because of the, uh, the left ventricular lead. Um, a direct annular plastic, percutaneous, that, that uh, cardio band, yeah. that, that there are case reports of those having been performed as an initial strategy for severe functional MR and then followed with mitroclip with good results. You bring the leaflets together, something we found difficult with yes. a central grasp today, so that might actually help that. Uh, but I think the experience is very early. It's, it's uh, mainly case reports and uh, I guess no one really knows whether that's a good idea or not, but it certainly is trying to even more emulate what the surgeons yeah. do. The clip tip is that, uh, how's that? Yeah. yeah, you can go, you can go, you can go. You, yeah. there's, there's enough room there, we know there is. Yeah, a little bit more, a little bit okay. more. Okay, and you're straddled, okay. 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 And then you apply it. Yeah. So you basically go a little bit close. No, 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 other way, other way. Other way. Okay. Okay. A little bit close to the other. So, this okay. how are we there? Sorry? That, that's yeah. enough, that's enough posterior, just yeah. go in. We just need to see Christopher. Okay, let me come back here. Let me come back. Yep. How are we going there, Chris, with us? Go more in. That's pretty good now, I think. That's pretty good, actually. Um, a little bit of P. You can do a bit P. Um, I don't think you need to do too much more P. In fact, you can come a bit AE now. So let's see how that's going to break yeah. down. There you go. And then okay. off him a little bit. That's we'll a bit too close. Bit. Just, yeah, that's okay. great. Yeah, that's good. And then I can test the. Oh, we go here. Let's go to immediately. So we just test the trajectory. Yeah. Okay. So LBO TV of Bruce, please. Yeah, let's just see where we are. What Ravi just did then was to uh, to have a roughly neutral uh, orientation of the guide. We introduced the clip delivery uh, system. Uh, to near the left upper pulmonary vein. Uh, we then go posterior and apply medial, and that's how we get down to the uh, mitral valve uh, where we are now. Uh, we now have to uh, position the clip uh, just lateral to the first clip, and uh, we need to test the trajectory to make sure that we don't interfere with the first clip, and we need to get the clip orientation right as well before we, uh, before we do that. Also, we don't cross with the, leaf, the clip open uh, as we would. That's correct. So uh, we need to close the clip before we go. We might even leave it unlocked so there's no uh, list or talk uh, issues. Uh, and we will cross the uh, valve with uh, the ventilator off. So if we just look at fluoro now, um, 
we can tell that the, the clip orientation is quite different to the last one. And so we really need to just uh, probably uh, clock it a bit. I think you're right. Let's try that. Well, we're going to do it by keeping away from the original clip because we don't want to. We'll probably it'll pull it back a bit more and uh, release the tension up higher. And then maybe we'll swap to a 3D on fast. So can we, uh, Nats, go to Echo just to show the audience uh, that we still have a little way to go before we're perpendicular to the line it's of pointing rotation. It's 11 o'clock and 5 o'clock, and you want it to point 12 and 1 if you can. So now it's better, isn't it? Yeah. That's uh, yeah, getting there. Yeah. It's good. It's good. It's Let's good. test the trajectory on yeah. Fleur, please. Okay. So back to Fleur, please, Nats. So we're going to immediately here, I think. Yeah. So that's right. So we'll have to take M off. Well, I can push you in a bit more. Well, M, M off, M and off we can come out. Yeah. yeah. So if we take M off, okay, and then trajectory. and then we will come. Okay. That's it. Even a bit more, I think. Yeah, that's better. Now, now we're looking pretty good. So we're still diving. So let's yeah. M more, M off. It's very nice orientation. Okay. Let's try that. Come back. I'll pull back a little bit more there. That's great. We don't want to lose this sheet completely. No. Now we're looking closer here, so yep, that, okay, that's, that's looking good. pretty good. good. So okay, good. Now, good so TV. clip orientation, Chris, just back to echo. So we can see the clip arms well, so I think we're happy to close, close the clip and... Chris, shows that? Yeah. Just don't do anything, just did. I think we got both. I think we got both. Hang up, don't do anything. Chris, just show us. Just to stop it, drop, drop, drop the clippers. Very good grasp with its arm. That's a fantastic grasp, it's quite close. Can't tell yet, you are got to be at the clips. Okay, let's just hands off and let's uh, let's Chris do the assessment. Yeah, yeah. So if you come from lateral to medial, you know the first clip will be the one we've just yeah, put in. I think we've got it. This looks great on Fleur. Very nice. Yeah. Let's release this clip and then we'll reassess and then decide if we need a third clip. So that's Fleur, please. Eight. That's it. Brilliant clip stair there. That's fantastic. Clip arm back. And then we take the gripper line out. Screen, please. So, Chris, we just don't need you to keep an eye on that bar. Just uh, show us where our guide is. We're still in by the look of it. I, I, I think you're okay. You're very anterior. So, so the posterior. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Then I'll come off a bit of medial. Then will bring it up there. Then I'll come out yeah. a bit. Advance a little bit and then rotate a little bit posterior. Yeah, that's good now. That's perfect. To him, please. So the V wave has halved from 52 to 26, and the mean atrial pressure was 20, went to 25 after the first clip, and now it's 14. We've certainly got so very the, significant the improvement. Is it lateral, Chris, or? Yeah. That's okay, that's what we want. So that's okay. great. So let's get another clip, please. And uh, Chris, is this the lateral jet you're showing us there? Uh, on the left panel, you can see that the lateral jet is really dead. Yeah. Uh, and so that's the one we should go for with the uh, third clip. And then. Uh, there we go. That's good. I think maybe we'll come out a tiny bit more. Okay, let's go. Twist the trajectory now. Is heading towards the. It uh, looks pretty good. I'm going to open this up, Chris. Uh, LBT view, please. Yeah. Uh, uh, grip us uh, up. Grip us up. Uh, that's great. Uh, so that's uh, wrong. So just rotate it clockwise, I think. That's better. That's going. That's great. It's great. A bit more. So, Chris, uh, I'm just going to test your trajectory a bit. I think yeah. I just don't want to. That's pretty good. We've got to be close, otherwise, you'll get caught in the courtyard out there. Okay. I think that's pretty good, okay, and then we can. Good. Then what we can do is we can. Okay, stay there. Then what you can do now is you don't, don't go any lower. You don't want to lower okay, that clip. That's good. So maybe a bit too far, I think. Yeah, I'll just open up the clip. Are you happy? Mm, I think you're in too far. 
tiny bit. Uh, okay, 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 Phil. It's, it's, it, just as you're unlocking it, it's moving Rotate in a lot. Yeah. So I'll rotate this. I'll just come back a tiny bit. Uh, bring it closer. To it. There you go. Okay, open the clip. Uh, okay, you can lock it again. It'll move it laterally. Try and lock it and see what happens. Okay, that's, that's pretty yeah. good. So we'll Bring just get right there. Just yeah, you're, 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 so remember, we shouldn't be deeper than the last clip. Make sure there's no tension there. You're pretty good. Just when you go back, just do it very slowly because yeah. it's moving very yeah, close to the tip of the last clip. Yeah, so you might have to go anterior the bit. Yeah, I agree. Okay. That's pretty damn good. I don't think it'd be much closer. Just come. Hang on. Hang on. Okay. Yeah, just go for it there. I think. Yeah. I'll just come a bit. And to uh, come up, come up further. You've got to pull it up, pull it right Close up on. so we get, yeah, no, but I think you've got to just make yeah, sure you coming. bring some tension on the leaf. It's tension on the leaf. Excellent. I think that's both on. I'm very comfortable. That was a so bicomissal review next, uh, just, just to see what it looks like, if we've impacted on the lateral jet or. That's yeah, true. And then the other thing we need to check, of course, is the grasp and the gradients, yeah? Yeah, I and think, I think the, the grasp the is, done, yeah. is very good, as you just yeah, said. We're and I think we're, the lateral jet's gone. Yeah. Okay, we might uh, pause here. There's not really, there's another minute to go, but I think we're running a bit short of time. So um, the, the pressure is kept down slightly. Yeah, that's good. 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 Yeah, that's a little bit further, you can see we've eliminated, virtually eliminated, or we've eliminated the lateral jet and overall the residual MI is fairly minor. The first clip was to stabilize the leaflets, bring them together so that we could then place a second and third clip in the locations that we wanted to, to really reduce the MI, and you can see we've achieved that. Uh, and with that, we've seen a significant hemodynamic improvement with more than a halving of the left atrial pressures, V wave, mean atrial pressure, which is one of the ways, and probably the main way that you can assess it. Assessing residual MR with multiple um, orifices is difficult. The color flow will look worse than it actually is, so it'll give the appearance of more MR than there actually is. Despite that, I think we've got a pretty good result. So, David, we might finish here. The patient, the, the, the patient, the patient. So the patient, um, I think, to be fair, had true end-stage heart failure and really was uh, unable to get out of hospital. And we offered him treatment to, to see if we could improve his situation. He did well for about a week, and then he got uh, some acute delirium, and uh, another week went by, and he, we couldn't get him out of that. Maybe it was a chronic low output state, etc. despite some inotropes. And at that point, the family stepped in and said, we think this is enough. And I think you have to listen to that as well. We had discussed that before, and I think we were giving this guy, or trying to give this guy his, his last chance. After that, he passed away. I mean, this was a very important point, David, that you've asked, because we had a very frank and uh, detailed discussion with him, with palliative care. He wasn't dying prior to this. I mean, he was coming in, drowning every night, with, well, every week with pulmonary edema. So we had a very detailed discussion with him and the expectations were quite well. He didn't die of his heart, maybe the anesthesia, the whole duration of the procedure may have um, confounded things, but certainly his LV function hadn't dropped after this procedure and his MR grade had, was very minimal at the end. So I think so from a major clip perspective, he sort of lay at the very extreme of what's yeah. possible. So I think, I mean, that's, that's an important point and I'll ask you to stay, even though I said we'd take questions at the end. Um, the, the t what proportion of mitral clip cases have you done FMR versus DMR? Mm. So, so, so currently worldwide it's about 70% FMR and, um, and, and the rest DMR. In the States they only have an indication for DMR and so there has to be, a bit like here, there has to be an element of mitral annual calcification so they can say there's mixed disease and then they can treat them. So probably the, the DMR or mixed cases have, have grown a little bit and I think the enthusiasm for absolute end-stage heart failure probably has fallen off a bit. I don't think you're going to improve survival. You might help symptoms. It might be a palliative treatment. Um, but uh, so I, th I think that's where we are. Perhaps if we get these patients slightly earlier, maybe they're still responding to medical treatment then, and the decision as to whether to send them for a device-based uh, treatment is a bit more difficult, because if you respond to medical treatment, you get out, why would you want to come in for a mitroclip? But that's probably the st when you have to start thinking about it. And if you had one or two or the most three heart failure admissions, things are not improving, then you start thinking about a, a valve replacement, a mitroclip, a carillon, whatever you've got.
And I think, David, just very briefly, if I could just comment that the Europeans are much more aggressive in intervening earlier than we are. I'm not sure how the other units do, but we certainly wait till a fairly um, late stage before we intervene because it is expensive. There are cost ramifications and we want to try everything beforehand. And maybe, as Peter says, if we intervene early, perhaps we can prevent these sort of end stage complications. And, and just a propos of that, for, for people who aren't from centres more familiar with MitraClip, um, this is clearly at, at that end of the spectrum of your experience. In a, in a case where you're using one clip for someone who's class three, roughly what's your procedure time and what do you tell patients they should expect in terms of MR reduction and symptomatic improvement? Um, I, I guess for a very straightforward A2P2 uh, regurgitation, it, the procedure time would be 60 to 90 minutes. I know that people can get under 60 minutes if they're, if they're slick. And they can normally go home within 24 hours. Um, you often keep them in for a couple of days because you're just to treat your own anxiety. Um, uh, if there are complex repairs, this guy, we warn everybody, they're often in longer and the procedure times can be extended because you want to get as good a result as you can. And that has to be offset with the duration of the procedural general anesthesia. So there, there's no rule. We try and achieve as best a result as we can uh, that's specific with the patient. And I, I think it's fair to say um, one of the, Saibul Carr is one of the world leaders of this and he presented the five year follow up data for this and, and in cases where it goes well, uh, the five year data are surprisingly durable. I think someone made the point during the morning that you, with the Alfieri stitch, the surgical equivalent, there are some that come apart because the annulus continues to dilate and you're pulling on something that shouldn't be pulled on. But at least with the MitraClip, I think the reason 40,000 have been done is a lot of people are getting good durable results and that's certainly been your experience yeah. as well, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've, we've had several patients in both categories, clinical categories that have done uh, very well and continue to do well um, and we've had a couple of patients where we've tried to help out and it hasn't worked out like for this gentleman. I mean the most satisfying cases are the degenerative uh, mitral regurgitations that are uh, not suitable for surgery uh, because of a hostile uh, uh, chest and they get better very quickly, very dramatically. The functional mitral regurgitations are variable and I, I still think we're, we need to, to get it right. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well please join me with thanking Rav and Peter for a fantastic case.